Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Our guest today is Nancy Soleri. Nancy is an authentic and successful example of how you can live the life that you want with an empowered, positive mindset, regardless of the challenges that you face. And Nancy is no stranger to facing adversities. During her childhood and teenage years, she witnessed domestic violence and the divorce of her parents at the age of 10. During these years, she struggled watching her sisters battle with eating disorders and her mom fight breast cancer. Unfortunately, the trials that Nancy experienced continued. And at the age of 16, she was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa and over the years experienced subtle yet measurable vision loss. Rather than letting this news, as well as her painful past, dissuade her from following her dreams, Nancy chose to persevere and now guide those who also want to overcome their obstacles. Nancy finds herself sharing her tools for success with audiences and groups all over the country. Nancy explored careers in broadcasting, the music industry, and real estate. However, Nancy wanted a career that would work with rather than against her blindness. She obtained her life coaching degree from the Institute of Professional Empowerment and launched her business in 2008, Living Full Out, with the intention of helping other, others realize their dreams. In addition to writing books and providing personal coaching, Nancy also speaks professionally, reaching out to a variety of audiences who enthusiastically embrace Living Full Out. Nancy also hosts the inspirational variety talk show, Living Full Out, and the National Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri radio show, which attracts callers in need of motivation to take action in their lives. Though today she is legally blind, Nancy continues to enjoy life and make connections with people. Outside of pursuing her career, Nancy can be found dancing with her friends, traveling to foreign countries while exposing herself to new cultures, enjoying exercise and a healthy lifestyle, spending time with her service dog, Lionel, and always reaching out to meet the next challenge in life head on and with a smile on her face. Hi, Nancy, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I am so excited to be here. I I just have to tell you that um, I was doing research for our interview and I went on your website and, you know, the things that you've accomplished and what I love most about is there are no excuses with you. You just, you find the yes, you find a way to, to make things happen for yourself and you really truly live the talk. And you live full out. And I, I think that's awesome. And I'm honored to have you here on our show to share your story. Well, thank you so much. And I, you know, I try to stand by, you know, what living full out means. And, um, you know, I think we all have our, you know, our integrity of walking that walk and talking that talk. Right. So I try to right. stand by that. Mm-hmm. We well, you know it's interesting. Um, I was telling my a, a guest earlier today that, um, I, I, I lost my husband. It'll be two years ago next week. And I have a son that's about to turn 17 and he's just done an amazing job. And I tried to use the death of my husband as an example to my son and his behavior is that it truly is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to it. And I'm hoping that that's a life lesson that I've taught my son that will carry through, but you are a true example of that. It's 10% what happens and 90% how you react to it. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I think has been kind of interesting over the years, because if I take, you know, let's say pre-16 and earlier, divorce my parents, domestic violence, being told I'm going to go blind at 40, you know, all those things, they hurt and they Mm -hmm. were scary and they were life changing. But then later on in my life, when I had a financial crisis, when I had five miscarriages, when I went through, you know, infidelity, infertility, you name it. It was interesting because those survival skills I had as a little girl were still with me as an adult woman. And it was kind of interesting because although the pain and the scary times were still there, it was like I had this inner confidence saying, you know what, you've been here before and you will survive this one too. That's right. So it's kind of interesting. We have to trust that inner voice and we have to trust that, that core in us. That's right. 
-hmm. Well, and it's interesting too, I think, because all of these disadvantages that you've had in your life have made you the person that you are today. And so I can't imagine you being anybody else, especially all the investigating and the research that I did on your website and just learning so much about you. It's that this, all of those things that you went through even early in life are this vivacious person that you are, that's who that helped to to create. So I can't imagine the person you would be had you not gone through all of those things. You know, it's funny. I do think about that because especially if I could see you know, yes. I think about, gosh, what would I drive? Like, right. I, I think a convertible personally, <laughs> but what would I drive? And, right. You know, what would my, what would my sense of style be like? Because right yes. now I go shopping with other people. So my style is <laughs> kind of their style, you know, I mean, right. for all I know, I'm walking out the door, totally not what I want to look like. I have no idea. But, um, but you're right. I mean, um, but I think it's kind of interesting, right? Because life has this way of kind of poking us in the side and saying, uh, 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 don't get too comfortable. That's and the right. minute we do something else happens. That's right. That's right. And you know, yep. you always wait. And I, I think that that's what I love about your story. Um, and what you exude by living full out is that, you know, some people wait for the perfect circumstance. I remember years ago, um, my husband and I were married for nine years before we had our son. And I remember telling people I need to get X amount of dollars in the bank before I have a child. And I remember them looking at me and kind of crossing their eyes and going, what? And I said, I want to make sure that I'm financially stable before I bring another life into the world. And what they said to me, then you'll never have a child, right? Because if you wait for the circumstances to be perfect, you won't ever do it. And that's what I love about what you do. You just go forward with, with whatever you've got right now. You just take that first step. Well, and, and yeah, and thank you for saying that. And I think your example is, is spot on because you know, the, the thing that's interesting is these moments that where life pokes us on the side, right, or these times of hardship, you know, they really are meant to center us, to teach us to be more patient. So I am such a patient person. And at the same time, you know, it is kind of game on because, you know, whether we have blindness or cancer or anything, we always just have to remember that we just have to live for today, that's right? right. That's right. And even if we go the distance and we live a full life up to 100 years old, it doesn't mean everyone around us will. You know what That's I mean? Right. That's right. So I think these hardship moments are just really great reminders that it's not about how much you have in the bank. I mean, it helps, but it's not about that. It's not about what you're driving, but it's really about creating memories and, you know, pressing the limits of, of what you can do personally and, and try new things. And yeah, that's, that's the, that's the secret to life. I think. That's right. Well, what do you tell? So you, you, you are a life coach and you work with people and, and I'm sure you've come across people who are stuck that basically wait for that perfect moment for them to take that first step or, you know, I, I have to, I can't start my business until X, Y, Z gets into place. And I, you know, whatever it may be, I can't start a speaking career until this happens. How, what do you do to coach them up from there? How do you, how do you encourage them and let them know just what you said? Look, it's not how much money you've got in your bank. It's not, we just, you just have to start. How do you, what do you do to encourage them? Well, I encourage them in two ways, two specific ways. Um, number one, the what if game, right? Mm-hmm. What if <laughs> I yes. wait and I wait and I wait, you know, what if it never happens? And, you know, it's better to have, have tried and to have failed or have tried and said, oh, you know, I need a little bit more time or a little bit more training or learning or money or whatever it is, but to turn around and say, oh, gosh, I wish I had done that 10 years ago. We hear people say that all the time with investments, right? I wish I had bought a property years ago. Right. I wish I started saving for retirement years ago. And so you just don't want to be in that I wish I had place. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I wanted to say is when, when we go through, again, these hardships, these stressful times in our life, and if we're looking to pay it forward and volunteer or coach or speak or, you know, just be a really good friend to another person going through a similar situation or, or different circumstance. If, if, if we're waiting and if we're looking for all the stars to align, think of all the people that are missing out on your support Mm. because you're waiting. Mm -hmm. So when you wait, 
all the people between now and when you're really ready, which could be a decade from now, right? Right, right. All those people miss out on the greatness of your teachings, right. of your your nuggets of insight. And so that's, right. that's pretty powerful, and that's a reason to start now. That's right. That's right. And I agree with you because, you know, the biggest thing is for me, um, I, I don't want any what, it, what ifs. I would rather move ahead and fail and say, well, I tried it and it didn't work, so I've got to try something else than to stand back and just say, gosh, I wonder if I would have taken that first step. And and again, you're just such a prime example of this because you you truly could just nobody would blame you if you're if you sat in your house and did nothing. Nobody would blame you. And, and that's what I told my son, too. You know, nobody would blame you if you laid in your bed and pulled your covers up at your head. But God gave us free will. <laughs> and so because we have that free will, I love what you've done. So tell me about the start of living full out. Like, how did you start that? And why did why did you start living full out? Oh, that is actually a really great question and, and good story. So um, we actually opened our doors in 2008. But in 2007, I was dating a gentleman who was dealing with depression. So here I had retinitis pigmentosa <laughs> going blind by the, by the minute, and he had um, depression, and it was clinical depression, and he took medication for it, but it too was getting more and more severe. And it was really hard in, in that relationship because I realized the pain and the worry and all that comes with, with all, you know, many different health conditions, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was doing real estate and um, I didn't drive anymore. At that point, my vision had decreased to a place where I couldn't drive. And, you know, I would ask him, you know, can you drive me, drive me to an open house? Can you, can you help me do this? And he didn't want to, not mainly because of his depression it affected his moods, but then it made me feel bad. Like, Oh gosh, I'm a burden. And ugh, I shouldn't ask. I should never ask, you know, that conversation, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. And and then um, in selling real estate, you know, I would see people buy these homes and I was, I was really proud that I was able to help people buy an investment or sometimes the biggest purchase of their life. But I knew that I could do more and I wanted to take how I saw people in real estate, how they would get in arguments over paint or floors or, mm -hmm. you know, how finances would break people apart. And I just thought, you know, I want to create a company where people can bring those fears, those concerns, but also that we can kind of, you know, put the fire out and reignite a new passion so they can have a new dream, a mm -hmm. new goal. And Love so that. that's how Living Full Out was actually born. It was just kind of this colossal chaos moment in my life. And, and we've never looked back. Wow. You know, I, I, another question kind of to that point, you know, you said that you had to, the gentleman that you were dating at the time, he had to drive you. How have you, as women, right? We want to do everything on our own. We, we hate to ask for help. We hate to be dependent on anybody. How, how have you overcome that? Because in order for you to achieve the success that you want to achieve, you have to ask for help. And so how have you, how have you found ways around that to, to be able to ask for that help that you need? That is, again, great question because um, so it kind of depends on in what way. So if it's a, a personal need, uh, a lot of times people just want gratitude. Mm -hmm. They want to know that they're not being taken advantage of. They want to know that they're making a difference. And so there's two sides to that because if you don't ask, then you're never giving that person the opportunity to be of service. And Amen. people crave being of service. People yes. are looking for that moment in the day where they can have a moment of purpose, right? That's right. Yes. So when we don't ask, we don't give them that gift. Um, on the same time, on the same token, though, you have to think about that person's time. And are they the right person? I truly believe that we have different personalities in our lives. Some are going to be more empathetic. Some are going to be better at technology. Some are going to have more free time. So just make sure that when you're asking for help, that you're asking the right person for the job. And mm -hmm. it's not always the same person because better people have different skills to, to, to assist. And then the last thing I was going to say is when it comes to business, a, a lot of how I ask for help in my personal life, I do take over the business, but I also believe in, again, for me, 
you know, my team and Living Full Out, they are my eyes. Mm-hmm. I might be the brain of Living Full Out, but they're my eyes. In some cases, they're the arms. In some cases, they're the legs, right? Right, so right. It, it, if you don't ask for help and you don't, then you don't build a team. Then you, and I think a lot of times where people get lonely and hopeless is when they don't have a support team, when they don't have that sphere of influence. And that team gets built when you ask for help. That's right. That's right. And I, and I agree with you. I do believe that people want to help, but sometimes they don't know how. So if you're specific in your request or you're specific in the question that you ask them, hey, can you help me with X, Y, Z? Right. They want to help. And you've given them exact direction on, yep, this is exactly how, what she needs to have up with and, and I can help her. So um, I think that's great. What, what have been your, coping, your go-to coping strategies during the years? Okay, well, to be very honest, mac and cheese has never let me down. Um, so. <laughs> you are a girl after my um, own heart. <laughs> you know, um, I'm just going to say it's always a good go-to. But, um, so, so definitely music. So I have playlists for all sorts of reasons. I have a playlist of songs that when I need to get, you know, I guess centered business-wise, they just – they take me to where I dream about living full out going or my own personal career goals going. So I have a playlist for that. I also have a playlist of songs that believe it or not, remind me of people that have passed or relationships mm. I'm not no longer with. And I mean, granted, I do hear that playlist and I cry, but sometimes crying is okay because it allows you to remember those people and, mm. and that you miss them and that, you know, it keeps them alive within you or keeps that time in your life to see how far you've grown within you. I mean, it's not like I turn that playlist on and I cry for hours, but I do believe in having a playlist that does touch your sensitive side. And then, uh, of course, inspirational songs. Um, I also firmly believe in inviting people into my world. I don't feel like I need to be a superhero in my world. So there are a lot of people that I turn to, again, picking the right friend for the right stories, right? But, right. you know, if I want to talk to them about, you know, something that really exciting that happened at work, then I, I have people that I can turn to. And where a lot of people kind of, again, have that lonely or, um, or isolation feeling is that they never get out of their mind. They never get it out of their heart. And it just kind of like, gets all this like energy gets built up inside you that I believe in sharing the positive stories and the heartbreaking stories with people in your life, because then you get that energy out of your mind, out of your body and you're, you're expressing it. And that is what it means to live full out also. Well, and I don't think that people, you know, sometimes if you only share all the good times, then they really don't get an opportunity to know you. Whereas if you share the good and the bad times, then you've really let that person into both sides of you and they have a better understanding of who you actually are. And it's your authentic self, which I love that in your bio, you know, that's what you talk about is, is the authentic. And so you have to let them in on the good times and the bad times. I, I truly agree with that. So what happens, like, how do you manage your fears around the future if your condition gets worse? Well, I believe that, well, it's interesting. I'm going to give you two, another two-pointer here. Great. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you some advice that a friend of mine gave me one time, and I always take it to heart. So I'm going to share it with your audience. She said, whenever I was having kind of a bad day that day when she told me this, and she goes, Nancy, I want you to rem- always remember this. Next time you're having a, a day like this and you're emotionally tangled up in what's going on, Picture yourself walking into a bad neighborhood with bars on the windows and graffiti all over. Would you proudly just stroll through that neighborhood? No, you might go a different direction. And it's the same way with the way that we sometimes mentally abuse ourselves or sabotage ourselves or play the same scenario over and over and over again, fester about it, right? That's a bad mental neighborhood. So don't go into that place. If you feel like you're spiraling or you're, you're replaying negative moments in your mind, you got to switch the energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. So so that's one point. But the other point is, I really think we have to to make a choice to be positive because life is imperfect. There's always going to be something. I mean, you can turn on the news and sadly, somebody's always dying one way or another, right? Or, 
you know, you can get, you can go on social media and there's always something that might make you feel bad. Like somebody has a better life than you or whatever, whatever. But I think it's a choice. And I choose every day I get out of bed and I, I push my life forward with all my might. And you know what? At some point at the end of the night, I'm going to have a glass of wine. I'm going to watch Shark Tank. I'm going to go in the hot tub. I'm just going to do things to celebrate that day. That's right. And then I'm going to go to bed and anything on my mind, I'm going to write it down or put it in my recorder. So it's off my mind on paper. And then I'm going to go to bed. And that is really all you can do. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And I read an article once that said it just is what you're saying. It's what you focus on. Right. And they said so many times we focus on the bad and not the good. And I was reading an article about successful women and they said, you know, one of the things that the successful women do is they focus on their strengths, not their weaknesses, but they focus on their strengths. And I thought, you know, how much better of a society would we be if we took the time to just do that, like to focus on the strengths that you had, not the things that you're lacking or why you can't do something. But but the whole reason that you can do it is because of these things that are inside of you. So tell me a little bit more, like, what do you see your your life legacy to be? The life legacy? Well, I hope, number one, in the most simple of ways, I hope that I'm a good friend. I'm a good sister. I'm a mm-hmm. good daughter, you know, um, because start there first, right? Before you go off impressing or giving to other people, just look at your true inner circle first and be the best at that first. Mm -hmm. Then I would hope that I would go out there and I would have made a difference either as a speaker in front of an audience or one-on-one coaching because somebody in an audience, that may be the only way I'm ever with them. And Mm -hmm. if they just have a minor shift then, then that's a win for them. Yay. Right. Mm-hmm. Or if the person who can do one-on-one coaching, but I realize, you know, it's, it's everything costs money. Right. So that they can be with me and I can get them on a good track. Yay. You know, a win for them. Um, you know, my goal is to really um, put together as much great content as I can, relevant content, and whether that be video or a radio show or blogs and, the thing about that that's interesting is it's one thing to have the idea and to create it, whether it's an audio or something written. But for me, like there's steps in there that I have to do to make that happen. Right. Like right now I'm learning a program called jo- um, Dragon, which it's called Dragon Naturally Speaking. Oh, yes. And it, it helps somebody who's visually impaired. I can just talk out what it is that I want to say. Because a lot of people, when I write, they want me to write like I would talk, just more mm-hmm. conversational. So why I share that with your audience is because to achieve our legacy, it's not just having passion. It's not just time. Sometimes it's the itty-bitty technical or the resources, the learning that we have to do to be able to fulfill that legacy. That's right. That's Mm -hmm. right. That's exactly right. And you're doing a great job finding those tools to help you leave the legacy that you want to leave. So we're exactly. almost out of time, but I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. And I, it's just a quick answer. So my team and I, when I, I take my team on a retreat every year and we choose a word for the year. It's kind of a, a one word theme that kind of sets up. So my word for this year was intentional. Somebody else's word was um, fun. So if you had to choose one word that would kind of um, set the theme for the next six months of this year, what would your word be? See, I knew we were soul sisters because (laughs) I've actually already picked my word for the year. I do that as well. And my (laughs) team does that too. So actually my word for the year is believe. I I love that. Believe. Believe in love. Believe in your career. Believe that one day I will learn guitar. Believe, believe, believe. That is my word. I love that. All right. So tell our audience where they can find you on the internet. Absolutely. So they can go to livingfullout.com. That will be kind of the main hub for most everything. Um, But social media, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and Pinterest and on and on. Um, And then definitely when you're on the Living Full Out page, you know, check out our radio show, our podcast, our blog, because we realize that some people are more auditorial learners and some people need to see it in writing. So however we can inspire you, we're there for you. Just livingfullout.com. 
Great. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, for joining us today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us and share the work that you do. If you have any questions or comments or would like to know more about the guests on our show today or for more information about Hello Gorgeous, feel free to contact me at kbecker at hellogorgeous.org or visit our website at www.hellogorgeous.org. And we invite you to follow Hello Gorgeous on Facebook, Instagram, or download our mobile app. Thank you for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker. And until next time, stay gorgeous.